So as I've mentioned in recent previous videos, there doesn't seem to be an end in sight for the Republican Civil War. As a matter of fact, with each passing day, it seems like an additional theater is added. And we have a potential big one here, folks, because the newly minted Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has told members of his caucus that there is insufficient evidence to proceed with impeachment against President Biden. And the MAGA Republicans in Congress are not happy to hear that. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. Okay, I have several clips to play, several articles to look at, several tweets to look out, and as has been the recurring theme of recent videos, there's a lot of schadenfreude to enjoy here because MAGA Republicans are furious. But I'm actually going to start with this clip from about seven days ago, six or seven days ago, from James Comer the leader of the the chairman of the Republican House Oversight Committee, the guy who is effectively leading the impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden. This is what he had to say six days ago. Based on what you know today, Congressman, should Joe Biden be impeached? I think he should, but that's going to be left up to the speaker. You know, people ask me why I haven't put someone in jail yet. All I can do is investigate. The House of Representatives can determine whether or not to impeach. But at the end of the day, we're going to need an attorney general who does the right thing and yeah. prosecutes people according to the law and doesn't have a two-tier system. So James Comer, the guy leading this investigation, the guy who you would think would be in the best position to determine you know, whether or not there's a sufficient basis to impeach Joe Biden, he says, I'm ready to impeach him now. He said that six days ago. Now, you and I know that there actually is no basis to impeach the president. But the disconnect here is hilarious because James Comer saying one thing, and Mike Johnson, his boss, the most powerful elected Republican in Congress, the guy who will ultimately make the decision, he's now saying something different. The Washington Post broke this article. Speaker Mike Johnson, a constitutional lawyer by training, has taken a more reserved tone, both publicly and privately, urging members to conduct a thorough and fair investigation with no predetermined outcome, in which case the Republican Party has effectively failed that because they've been gunning for this man, President Biden, since January. In a closed-door meeting with House Republican moderates this week, he indicated that there is insufficient evidence at the moment to initiate formal impeachment in proceedings, according to people who attended the meeting. And this is a quote from Don Bacon, one of those alleged moderates. We'll just go where the evidence goes, and we're not there yet, Don Bacon said, paraphrasing Johnson's comments at the inquiry at the Republican Governance Group's weekly lunch on Tuesday. Most of us are saying, look, we can't even get a single Democratic vote on this right now. I think the voters will reject what they're seeing when it comes to Biden's policies. The high crimes and misdemeanors, I don't think we've seen that or enough data to really make a good case. And I feel like Johnson really agreed with us on that. Woo! I mean, that is even Don Bacon there is being far too generous to the Republican case by saying, well, I, I, I don't think I don't think we're there yet. I don't think there's enough there. Like there is a total absence of a credible case. I mean, just a complete void, like a howling abyss where a case should be. So even he's being too generous. And Politico has also confirmed it. Um, Johnson took a more reserved tone towards the investigation, suggesting in a meeting this week that there's insufficient evidence. Um, Johnson, here's the other thing. Johnson appeared to agree with Republican lawmakers who argued that since Biden's polling numbers have been so weak, there is less of a political imperative to impeach him. Okay, folks, so we've mentioned that the impeachment process is technically a political one, right? It doesn't bring a criminal conviction. If a president or any government official, because not just presidents who could be impeached, Supreme Court justices could be impeached, secretaries of state or the cabinet members can be impeached. If a government official is impeached and convicted by the Senate, they don't go to jail. This is not a legal case. There's no threat of legal conviction. So it is inherently political. But that that and Johnson appeared to agree with Republicans who argued that since Biden's polling numbers have been so weak, there's no real political reason to impeach him. That is nakedly, stupidly political. As far as I know, you will never find any quote like that coming from Democrats when they tried to impeach or they did impeach Donald Trump twice. I mean, just shamelessly, brazenly political. But it's important to remember that Johnson did not always take this posture, okay? I want to play this clip uh, before he was Speaker of the House, but just a couple of months ago. It's been within the past eight weeks. This is what Mike Johnson had to say when the impeachment inquiry was announced, the formal impeachment inquiry by then-Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution itself expressly states that the sole power of impeachment belongs here to this House. And then Article 2, Section 4 says... 
Listen to the language carefully. It's expressly written in the Constitution. This is not political talking points. We're not making this up. It says in Article 2, Section 4, that the president shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. My friends, I just listed a, just a small sample, just the tip of the iceberg of, of the credible allegations and the mounting evidence that shows that Joseph Biden has engaged in bribery schemes, pay-to-play schemes. That doesn't sound like a very moderate tone or a very moderate declaration, right? He's saying, listen, the president shall be impeached according to the Constitution for bribes, and there's mounting evidence that Joe Biden engaged in bribes. And he said this months ago. So what's changed? Especially when you have James Comer, who's leading the investigation, saying, no, I'm ready to impeach him now, but Mike Johnson has to be the one to make the decision. It makes you wonder, could it be that Mike Johnson was full of shit from the beginning and that he knows that there's no credible basis by which to impeach and sex successfully convict President Biden and that perhaps it was all to try to hurt him politically? Perhaps. This is what Mike Johnson had to say in an interview with Sean Hannity shortly after he became Speaker of the House. And note the change in tone. Note the evolution. It's a real problem. That's the reason that we shifted into the impeachment inquiry stage on the president himself. Because if, if in fact, all the evidence leads to where we believe it will, that's very likely impeachable offenses. You know, that's listed as a cause for impeachment in the Constitution. You know, bribery and, and uh, other high crimes and misdemeanors, bribery is listed there, and, and uh, it looks and smells a lot like that. And I think the evidence, we're going to follow the truth where it leads. We're going to engage in due process because, again, we're the rule of law party. I know people are getting anxious and they're, they're getting restless and they just want somebody to be impeached, but that's not, we don't do that like the other team. We have, to, we have to base it upon the evidence, and the evidence is coming together. We'll see where it leads. So again, he didn't do a complete 180, but clearly note the shift. Something's changed over the past couple of months, and it could be because he has a higher profile position because he'll be the one actually making the decision. He's not just a cheerleader in the peanut gallery. It will ultimately be his call to impeach President Biden if he's still speaker, which we'll get to that in just a second. But see the shift? So very clearly, Johnson is giving the game away bit by bit by bit. This is simply a purely partisanly political exercise in a despicable way. It's not based on any credible allegations. This was a from a subsequent interview uh, with Hannity a couple of weeks after that clip I just played in which he is joined by James Comer and Jim Jordan and other members of the Republican conference. Listen to this exchange. But are we really, is this an impeachment inquiry, Mr. Speaker? Is this leading to impeachment? Do you believe that the evidence that they're accumulating in these th three committees is now leading to the ultimate impeachment in the House of Representatives of Joe Biden? Next to the declaration of war, impeachment is probably the most serious power that Congress has. We do not wield it for political purposes, but we are following the truth where it leads. And you hear the evidence, you hear this laid out and summarized. Of course, you know there's much more than what we're able to do in one segment. Uh, we're going to follow the truth where it leads because we have a constitutional responsibility to do so. We're on it and we're going to continue it. Let me scan the room. How many of you think... So, complete non-answer, right? And it, But again, even in that non-answer, note the moderate tone. He's even more moderate than he was in the previous clip, which was much more moderate than he was in the clip before that. He didn't even answer the question directly. Um, you know, we're just going to follow the facts where they are. It's a very serious power that we have. And you've heard the evidence that these, these people are pointing out. We have way more than that. So he's trying to have a foot in both worlds, very obviously. But it's not working, folks. It's really not. Now, in the aftermath of the reporting that he says there's insufficient evidence to begin a formal impeachment of the president, uh, MAGA Republicans in and out of Congress were furious. So this is Laura Loomer. Uh, I told you all that Speaker Johnson was full of shit. I was attacked for not supporting him as Speaker of the House. On July 20th, he said that Joe Biden and his family are hopelessly corrupt. Today, Johnson said there's insufficient evidence at the moment to initiate formal impeachment proceedings. Remember when I told you all that the House GOP was never going to impeach Biden? And to think that Mike Johnson had the audacity to go on Sean Hannity and gaslight the American people into thinking that he actually cared about accountability and truth because we live in a constitutional republic. Public. Mike Johnson is a rhino con man. But it wasn't just Laura Loomer who doesn't sit in Congress. She's a very influential MAGA influencer, I suppose I would say. You also have Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's not happy about the situation either. Breaking. Speaker Mike Johnson will not go forward with impeachment hearings because there's insufficient evidence at the moment. Are you effing kidding me? And I think Cernovich uh, 
also said, Speaker Mike Johnson said there's no insuffi- there's insufficient evidence at the moment. Congratulations, everyone. And the meltdown continues. I think Marjorie Taylor Greene made multiple posts about it. I'll also remind everybody that at the moment, that rule for a single person to initiate the motion to vacate, it's still in effect. So in theory, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, or any of the MAGA Republicans who will be very displeased to hear what the Washington Post reported, they could trigger, they could do to Kevin, or they, excuse me, they could do to Mike Johnson what they did to Kevin McCarthy at any time. And right now, Democrats are not incentivized, just like they were with Kevin McCarthy, they are not incentivized to protect, to protect Mike Johnson in this situation. This is the scenario that Republicans have put themselves in. And I want to reiterate, they and they alone are morally and politically responsible and culpable for the situation. They have caught themselves in a death spiral politically of extremism. At any point, they could choose, they could make the tough decision to stop and recalibrate. And to be sure, they would probably lose you know, certain elections, at least for the, the short term, but it would be for the long-term benefit of the Republican Party and certainly for the country as a whole. This isn't the end of the story. Mike Johnson is clearly, as a Republican politician, he's a liar, much more of a liar than any Democrat. And it's just part of the, the business. If you're going to be an elected Republican official, by definition, you're just more dishonest than a Democrat politician. So this may not be the end. It could be very well that Mike Johnson just told the moderates what he thought they wanted to hear since 18 of them are operating in Biden districts. Uh, and he may say something else to the MAGA Republicans next week. You can never count on This is not the end of the story. I just simply want to point it out that Mike Johnson, in his heart of hearts, very clearly knows that in terms of an evidentiary basis— Republicans have woefully failed to meet their burden. You let me know what you think in the comments, and then let me know what you think. Will Republican, will Mike Johnson change his tune in a week? Will Republicans proceed with an impeachment of President Biden? Let me know what you think.